morning. It is Deacon Ray here. It is Wednesday. It is November 24th. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Boy, how quickly the year is going by. Uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm 24, to, or excuse me, Psalm 64 today. Psalm 64. I'll be using the ESV version of the Bible. Um, it's entitled, Hide Me from the Wicked. And again, welcome to you as you're joining us this morning. Uh, we have uh, Psalm 64 in front of us, and again, the English Standard Version. And tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so I pray that all of you will have a very wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. And uh, look forward to celebrating with your loved ones as best you're able in these still very uncertain COVID times. Um, we're going to dig right into Psalm 64. It starts off with, hide me from the wicked. So if you haven't got your Bibles handy yet, I certainly encourage you to do so. I encourage you to gather your Bible, to gather around as we uh, dig into uh, what God has to say to us this morning through David uh, as he wrote this psalm. Uh, I want to kind of a little background information on this. Unlike Psalm uh, 59, in which I had last week, uh, where very specific circumstances were uh, being laid out for us as to when David wrote that psalm. With this one here, we don't have that same situation. This is more of a compilation. It's uh, written at a time when his life is uh, filled with all kinds of anxiety, all kinds of problems, lots of enemies. <coughs> Excuse me there. And so uh, he wrote this psalm. And so we can meditate upon it uh, ourselves. We can take a look at it. And that's what I'd like to do. So. We're going to read the first uh, six verse, verses, and so if you'll join me. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the throng of evildoers who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows, shooting from ambush at the blameless. I have to apologize. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Excuse me again. Okay, uh, I'm going to pick up verse 3. Who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows, shooting from ambush at the blameless, shooting at him suddenly and without fear. They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? They search out injustice, saying, we have accomplished a diligent search, for the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. And again, I do apologize. Apparently, I got a cough here. <coughs> Man, I don't have any way to really mute uh, the thing, uh, so just bear with me for a second here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, one of the first things I'm going to take a look at is what David says in his opening verses. Right? He says, preserve my life. Now, this says from dread of the enemy, um, the fear of his enemies, right? Not sure what they're going to do. And I take this as a time when David feels his life is really constantly under threat. And I don't know if I've ever been in those kind of situations, but I can tell you that I have had times where um, it seems like everything is going the wrong way. Everything's going backwards. Everything is uh, just piling up. And so maybe you can relate with that as well. <coughs> as we take a look at how we dig into the Psalms, too, there's a couple of ways we can look at them, right? We can read them, and we can just read them as a historical account and just take it as a matter of fact. The other way is to read it by identifying with some of the people here, like in this case, maybe with David, right? And when he's feeling anxious, we can feel anxious, right? And when he has victory, we can feel that victory too. And so I hope as you read this, uh, you'll do that. You'll put yourself in David's shoes and walk with him for a little bit and get a sense of what he was going through. Because this, again, as I said before, is a very hard and trying time in his life. And so he's asking God to literally preserve his life. And so we take a look at that. And then he goes on to describe who these people are. He says, hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the throng of evildoers who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows, who wet their tongues like swords, who aim their bitter like arrows, shooting from ambush at the blameless, shooting at him suddenly and without fear. Have you ever been there? People taking shots at you? trying to pick you off, uh, maybe it's a job promotion, uh, whatever it is, right? There's things that are going on in life. And so um, David says, hey, they're just coming at me from everywhere. They're everywhere, and they're evil men, and they're coming after my life. And so his plea, right, Lord, protect me, help me, that I may not have this go on in my life. 
Uh, they hold fast to the evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? They diligently, or they search out injustice, saying, we have accomplished a diligent search, for the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. And here, as we look at this, David's talking about the depth of sin, right, as it goes on and on. And, uh, you know, it says in the scriptures that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so as uh, David talks about these things, he's looking at the wrong place. He's looking at his enemies. He's looking at uh, everybody that has the power maybe in this life to bring them some hurt and pain. But ultimately, God has the ultimate power, right? He has the, the final say in all these things. And so verse 7 picks up, but God shoots his arrow at them. They are wounded suddenly. Isn't that interesting? God's arrows. They're perfect. They hit the target. They accomplish exactly what God has in store for them and what he has in mind for them. And so now David has taken his eyes off of his enemies. He's taken them, his eyes and put them on Jesus, where they really, or on, on, on God, where they really belong. For, you know, for me, that's on Jesus, right? We want to take a, a look at, uh, at our Lord and Savior, whatever's going on in our life, taking that time to focus on him rather than on our problems. Now, Peter got himself in some trouble that one time when he was out walking on the water, right? And, and he's got his eyes on Jesus, and then he looks around, and all of a sudden he sees the waves and stuff, and he starts to sink. Why? Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And sometimes that happens to us, too, as we take our eyes off of our Savior. <coughs> and I apologize again for my cough. It just snuck up on me out of nowhere. Excuse me. And this is going to be a terrible video for that aspect, but I pray that God's word will prevail through all of this. So as we go along, um, you know, they are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. Then all mankind fears. They tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. And there again, going back to uh, Psalm 59, uh, when David was uh, writing about his enemies, he said, Lord, don't kill them. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't kill them. Keep them around. Remind, let people look at them and be reminded of your power, right, that they can become a lesson. And so, you know, that's still a thing we want to think about, right? We want to, the stories that, that our lives can tell. And for hopefully for us, we're showing the love of, of God. We're help, helping other people understand how God is and the great love he has for people, right, as we live our lives reflecting the love of Christ. And so he goes through all of this, and then he comes to verse 10. And this is a great way for, uh, for us to really wrap up this morning, right? Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exalt. And, you know, this day before Thanksgiving, uh, something we can do, not just today or tomorrow, but every day of our lives, to give thanks to God, to thank him for all of the wonderful blessings he brings in our life. And when we find ourselves being overwhelmed by problems, and I'm not saying that they aren't real serious problems, I'm not. The thing is, what are we going to focus on? Are we going to focus on the hurt and the pain and the suffering that we're going through? Or are we going to look upward and outward and focus on our God who gave his son to die for us? And trust that he will fight our battles. He will fight our victory, or, or will bring victory to us, right? He will do the fighting for us. He will bring our enemies to ruin. And in all these things, you and I can rejoice. You know, even when the victory is not right in sight of us, you know, even if our loved one is laying there and, and getting ready to breathe their last breath, we can still rejoice because we know of God's great mercy towards that loved one who's departing. Or even as we're battling our own health issues, we can rejoice because we know that the disease does not have the final say. It's our God who gives us faith, who brings us eternal life, who through the blood of his son Jesus, right, has brought us into his family as we live our lives by faith. And that's what I want to leave you with as a, a reminder of that, that whatever you're going through in your life, God is already victorious. He will bring you through all of these things, whatever you're going through, whether it's family, relationship problems, health issues, bill problems, job problems, uh, just being shook by the, the news of the incident down in Waukesha and the sudden tragedy that befell all those that were there. Every time we turn on the news, you know, we're bombarded with all of the hurt and the pain, and, and we can lose our focus. We can forget 
that our God loves us, that he's in charge. And so if you do find yourself struggling with this, I just encourage you to look at Jesus. Hear his words from the cross, it is finished. And then look at that glorious tomb, right, as that resurrection Sunday when Jesus rose from the dead, having conquered all. And you and I are blessed by our God to live in that faith. May we continue to grow more and more in his image. Again, I'm going to wrap up uh, this uh, this morning, and I'm going to wish you all a very blessed and happy Thanksgiving. Again, I apologize for the coughing, and I can feel it coming on now, so I should probably just end here. <coughs> but too late, right? One more cough just for the road. So God's blessings to all of you, and I will see you all later.